Okay, so welcome to the Chaos DEI Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Working Group. Uh, let's talk about um, the upcoming information for release. Um, do we have a specific, I think it's the 15th, uh, today is the 13th, that we have about two days to get these um, finished up, submitted to translations, things like that. So would it be worth it, would it be valuable to go through um, the repository and just kind of pick out anything that we may need to do final updates on? I think so, for sure. Let me share my screen. So um, we have a series of pull requests. These, um, these are not necessarily release related, but do we have to get them finished by release? It would, it would be like changing things in the readme. Um, I don't think so. This is this this conversation was actually brought up by Emma, um, I and um, she had brought up that um, we, we didn't really have this as a metric and we didn't have it something that we consider necessarily anymore. It was something okay. that we had from before. But this this isn't a metric, right? No, I was wondering. We got two readme pull requests. I think they can wait. I think so too. Let's yeah. Like I thought maybe uh, maybe we could and the other one is just the root directory or the root. Yeah. Root so we can we can pop over to the metrics candidate releases. Yeah. Let's do um psychological safety to start. Thank you, Elizabeth, for opening this and throwing in the checklist. It looks like everything's checked here. Looks like we're good to go on this one. So once it releases is when we close the issue, right? That is correct. And could we okay. just do a cross check with the translations repo? Yeah. Just to make um, sure that we did our job there. It's, I know it's checked, but actually, you know what? If it's checked, maybe we're pretty good. We should trust the check. Okay. And since since there were no changes to that, we don't have to reopen an issue in translation, right? No. Okay. There was one yeah. small pull request, but it doesn't make a lot of, it doesn't, it's not a huge change. It's been merged at this point. Okay. Well, then we should go back to the translations then on that one. Okay. Because they, and all we need to do is just add to the issue associated with that metric and just say, hey, there's been a slight change. Which one is that? Um, is that? Um, psychological safety, it is. Yeah, I just saw it. Yeah. And so just type at the bottom to say yeah. there has been a tiny update. Once. Yeah, right in that metric. And then re add the Chinese translation tag, label, whatever. Should I link this um, issue as well, or the mm -hmm. pull request that got merged? You don't have to do that. Oh, okay. would that be good though for them to, or at least see what the change was so they don't have to try to figure it out? We, so Kevin, we had this talk and okay. Kevin had said they can just do a diff. Okay, perfect. Between the two and they can, it's probably easier. They just, and so all we wanted to do was just, um, and then just add the label, add the Chinese. Oh, you, Oh, can yeah, you yeah. Add the Chinese label add, again. Add the Chinese, I cannot add the Chinese label. You might need oh, that. Can you just you comment? I'll add it. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. And um, let's move forward. Got a couple more. What, which one was that? What number was that? I'm sorry. Psychological I, safety. No problem. Um, I see. Two. Gotcha. All right. That's been re added. Oh yeah, um, there's one small thing here that the, um, I don't know how much it's going to break, but it just says inclusive experience, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, do we need to change this at all? What is the? Uh, it's inclusive experience at event, but it just says inclusive experience in the metric name. I don't know if we know. Necessarily... I'm okay. Um, well, we probably should say at event because that's kind of important. 
I'm gonna open up two open a PR. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. Just uh, I'll have to go over the website. I can take an extra time to go over the website and make sure that this is fixed. That would be um, good. I th I do think it's pretty important. Okay, sounds good. And does that, hmm, that's funny because in the, well, not funny, but like in the translations repo, it is the full name, not the metric itself, but you know what I mean? So, okay. So it doesn't look like a new translation needs to be done on that. I just realized um, that I needed, I have the sign off like copied in, in, a, in a note, but I forgot to copy it. So, oh well. Um, so we have another item here about speaker demographics. It looks like we need to create something in chaos translations. Um, this is the refactor from attendee and speaker demographics to event demographics. Right. Do we not? Let me see. We have uh, August 15th. Oh, we yeah, have, we have it. It's a number 70. Yeah, I see it. Yep, all good there. Okay. Uh, then that's you checked. can click that. Yeah. Um, the rest looks good. I went through a lot of these early on and um, kind of poke around and see what I could find that would be unchecked. Okay. And um, a lot of it was already checked from the beginning. A lot of it was already done. So I would uh, say, honestly, like easy. the DEI working group runs really well. So yeah. always has. <laughs> Time and always. Okay. Um, so that is all of our metrics candidate releases. Let's hop back over to the notes. Can you, I'm sorry, can you do one more thing? Could you go to yeah. number 351 release notes down at the bottom? Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, can we just, um, can we just like put like our metrics are ready to go and our metrics include? Yeah, um, let me, let me. Um, Inclusive experience at event. Okay, let me turn off my mic. Okay. Um, at events. Psychological safety. Uh, I don't remember. Let's see. Was that it? Was there one more? I'm hopping over to see. I think we oh time inclusion. I do we're oh, yeah. missing one. Yep. I've been telling everybody we have four, so I really hope so. <laughs> time inclusion at events or events for virtual events. <laughs> cool. Okay. So we are that sounds like we are all sealed for release. Um, that's really exciting. Yeah, that's cool. Nicely done. Uh, white screen incoming. I just have to say, like every time, it's not just with DEI, but every time we do a metrics release, I'm always kind of like taken back by the amount of work that people do. Like, I mean, I, I don't know how many metrics we had released this round. I mean, over 15, maybe 12, 15. I think 16. That's a lot. There's also one more, uh, if you scroll down a little, uh, documentation discoverability still has the metrics candidate release. So I don't know that we, I think that this, that's part of this one too. It is in translations, so. To be honest, I didn't catch on to that. Um, so we have one item that we need, another name that we need to fix here. So I can do both names at once. 
double check that everything works. So it uses an underscore instead of a hyphen. Is that worth um, switching over for now? Uh, yeah, it's probably worth switching. Let's just be. Oh, that's a really good one second. I have to wait for it to load. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, it says the branch is going to me, so let me just fix that real quick. Okay. Um, let me just find it in the repository. Could be um, probably community. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Do we need to remove that first paragraph too? Oh second? yeah, we're supposed to remove the disclaimers. We can, I can just do that. And I'm not gonna create PRs. I'm just gonna, I'll do it on all of them. And then just, just, you Amid know. Master. Or maybe, yeah. ah! I was gonna like, <laughs> yeah. Such a rebel. I know. Do you want me to commit this one to main, you said? Yeah, and I, well, before you do it, just go up a little bit, scroll up, and just pull off that thing at the top row. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Can, I think it's okay to commit it. Oh, so I'll do it for the other ones. Is what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. That sounds and then great. Um, we just need to add that to the road lease notes that you just listed. Yep. Okay. I'll add it to three fifty one. Thank you for catching that, Elizabeth. That's very helpful. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Um, so, I'm waiting till everything has dark mode, so I can't. So I, my eyes don't bleed when I hope open up docs. But um, so we. We have a we have a lot of things from last week. Uh, I think it's good to focus on the release for now. But we have a couple other things to talk about. Do we want to talk about those, like mentoring, uh, onboarding, stuff like that? That's during this meeting. I think we have time. Yeah, certainly. Um, so, what do we want to talk about with mentoring? Is that yours, Matt? Mm, I don't know. So I, I can I can speak to this that um, we have this document in the handbook that I've been kind of um, sending people to when they ask me how do I get started with um, like becoming a member of the chaos project and stuff and I'd send them to path to leadership, which is actually a really helpful um, document. But um, it might be good to talk about talk to um, mentees at least have some kind of idea that's specific to mentees and how they can become members of the chaos project as far as like how they can get involved what what other ways they can get involved and this might have to do with the onboarding as well what do you think about that can you say that again i was removing headers that's okay um so we have this path to leadership. I'm going to pull up that document in the community handbook real quick. Uh, and I'm kind of thinking about either ways we can um, we can improve this um, item in the handbook, which I think it's doing pretty well personally. But um, we have um, Are you showing all the requirements something? built out. It, it says path to leadership, but we don't necessarily okay. have the um the path built out there sorry that someone's coming into the office okay so um we have these these really good I, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a path though it's just more requirements listed so maybe the action item would be to um, build out a preliminary documentation that's um about like the the kind of the like a flow chart or something of how you become um uh, something like 
documentation maintainer? How do you get there? Because it's this is just kind of more the destination. Right. And it makes me wonder too, um, like how do we as a community reflect on this as well? So let's say, for example, Matt, like, or, or somebody who joins the community who's new and they kind of look at this list and they're like, okay, I attend meetings and I hold good, not like I do these things, right? I have knowledge of Git and GitHub. So I, I personally check all these boxes, but then there's no like reflection from like any of the people in the community to actually recognize the work that's being done. So like how Maybe do we- it's just a matter of uh, 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 like, not just like attribution, but like rec more recognizing this, the contributions by people who are new to the project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, This might be. I think this. I think this for me will become a leg of the um, the onboarding stuff that I'm doing, uh, which I can show you in a moment. Okay. We have some messages in the chat too. I think. Oh, it's just it was for the minutes. Okay. Yeah, so, like who would be the person or or people who would kind of take periodic reviews of. You know who those active members are in the community and reaching out like is that a is that a role of the community manager or is that a role of like more core maintainers and like how do we yeah i don't know I, I feel might, like, yeah this might be a whole chaos kind of question too um with people from every working group because there's different ways to recognize new contributions in different different styles different working groups and software projects and things like that. Um, does someone want to take, so I'm not going to be there next Tuesday, but does somebody else want to take an action on them to um, just talk about this, see what people think in the whole, the whole group? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, we can talk about it here too. So, um, like, I think it would be hard for you, Elizabeth, as the community manager to like see every working group, you know, like just there's so many meetings. And, and I'm usually at most of them, you know, you? Really, yeah. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm like, I would be afraid to miss someone. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think it would be better if it was a more diverse group of people that come together and like kind of go through this. Um, Cause yeah, it does seem like that would be a lot for one person. Um, but I'm happy to, you know, obviously be on that team and, and, you know, get it going. That would, I think it would be great. And it's also something, I'm not sure how logistically we could do it. Cause I don't know that you want to necessarily have that conversation in the working group meeting because like, it's possible that, you know, I mean, there's the, the positive that somebody becomes a maintainer or a well, whatever, website maintainer, uh, documentation maintainer, but it's also possible that that people would be like, uh, I'm not sure that this person fits that profile at this moment or something like that. You know what I mean? Like I, there hasn't been a commitment from, well, I don't know, whatever it might be. And you just hate to have that conversation too much in the open. I don't know, like I, I err towards openness, right? It's an open source community and I wanna do everything as openly as possible. Um, so like the way that we, in the, so for example, in the, the chaos board, right? So we have, we have board members in the chaos project. And as somebody rotates off of the board, typically it's initiated by that individual just saying, I'm no longer interested in being on the board or not even that, but like, I've, you know, I've been on the board for four years and I think it's all good and I'm happy to have done it. And I think it's time I step down. So then it's usually kind of an informal discussion about people who have done like kind of large scale commitments to the project who are kind of talking about the project. At, you know what I mean? Like kind of this, this outward face, which is a little different than what we have here. Um, but it's, it's kind of done ad hoc and not necessarily in like the community meeting or in a, 
uh, it's just kind of done a little bit more ad hocly, like through through other ways. I don't know. I don't know if I'm making sense here. I'm trying to balance things. I mean, yeah, it is kind of sensitive. Um, I, I'm wondering if if this is something that people could opt in to, you know, like or express an interest in to someone like, mm -hmm. you know, hey, I, I want to become a website maintainer. Like they reach out to a person and say, I want to do this. You know, how do I do that? Can I can you help me? And then we could go through the checklist and see, you know, how they how they kind of fall on all of those. Um, mm -hmm. But like some of these like proficient in GitHub markdown, like I, yeah, like to to rate someone, like am I supposed to determine their level of proficiency or are we going on like the honor system or like how do we, yeah, I totally see what you're saying, you know, but also I think allowing people the opportunity to kind of voice their um, interest in getting mm -hmm. a point would be good as opposed to trying to guess who might be interested or who mm -hmm. would. So I don't know, it's just a thought. I feel like this is a really good conversation though, because this really is a core um, community development piece that is missing right now. And it kind of does go on with the onboarding and the, you know, the setting up long-term um, relationships and engagement from people. Right. So, so this, um, this Lauren, document here is, uh, what's Good that? Lauren, yeah. Sorry, I just came unmuted. Um, I guess I was, whichever way we go, if they decide to kind of voice interest for themselves versus kind of like this nomination type process, I think we should just be really explicit about that. Um, like like what, how, how you, my, the path to leadership, like what are the steps involved, not just what is the end goal, what is, what is the step to get there? Um, and I don't know, I'm also kind of wondering, like maybe it's a blend of both, like self-nomination and like community nomination. Um, you want to be interested in it, obviously, but I know that there's statistics like how many people don't fit the entire job description, so they just don't apply, you know. Um, so having somebody else kind of be like, hey, I think you'd be good at it, kind of like a recruitment thing to kind of prompt that self-nomination might be necessary. Um, just kind of thoughts there. No, I like that because it, like what we're looking at here on Matt's screen is kind of like a, a list of skills. Um, but it doesn't, to me, it doesn't necessarily describe a path to leadership. Like it doesn't per necessarily describe the process by which an individual would would do that. And to your point, Lauren, like whether it's self-nomination or identification from like a working group individual, you know, that's been running a working group for a long time. And I don't have the answer for it here. And it probably is a blend, but I think it makes sense to describe what the process is as well, not just a skills checklist. Yeah, exactly. We do have these these notes where it says usually existing maintainers elevate others. And there was another one down by the board of how those people get nominated. Is it scroll down, Matt? Uh, new board members are nominated, voted into office, blah, blah, blah. So that's, but that's super easy to miss. I, I mean, I missed it. I just now saw it when Matt was scrolling. So, um, and it feels very loose and yeah. yeah. So maybe we need to yeah. like take that note right there that says usually existing maintainers, something along those lines, because we could work the text, but like that should be the top level thing. And skills that we think you should be self comfortable with include the following, you know what I mean? And so, so then Lauren's point, like, you don't have to have all these skills. Maybe we could even say that. We're just kind of hoping that you might have a few of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I have, a, I have a couple notes on this, too. Um, for, the first part is that when we talk about, when we have badging requirements, we actually laid these out probably a week ago. And uh, we wrote them out and said, all that we, we have these top level things, and we're going to be writing some blurbs for each one that describe them at a high level, but then having that detail for people who feel the need to um, go in and get more information, I think is really important. And then we have preferred versus required, and they all started out pretty much required. And then we, and then we ended up turning three out of five of them in, into preferred skills, because really required means you need to know this, you need to have the skill. And the other parts are like, it'd be nice if you had this, but it's not necessary. Like we could have a maintainer without this, um, 
proficiency, something like that. Yeah, I like that. It takes like the burden off like excellent writing skills. As like one of the things for website maintainer. I, we can also go to the, um, I, I hate to keep bringing up Drupal, but they're, they're really, they're really doing a great job. Like this is super clear. Here are the roles. Here's how you get to be uh, this person in the project. This is, you know, exactly very clear. Um, even if you don't know what role you want, they have other ways to get involved. Like I want to um, connect with members of the Drupal community who live or work nearby. Like there are other ways too. So I, I feel like this is, they, they're really doing a great job and maybe we could pull something from that. Is there something in there about like a path to leadership? Um, yeah, well, it says the community organizes itself into topical and geographic groups. Um, a few groups also have spaces here. So it's like they're working groups, but also like here's where you click if you want to get involved in mentoring. Here's the mentoring team. So then you click on that and there's like, who are we? What do we do? How do we work? How can I get involved? Like for each group, each area of Drupal. Granted, they're huge. We're not that big. Yeah. Um, but like there's mentoring coordinators that help you figure out, you know, what you want to do and what they're accountable for. And like, it's just very, very clear of, you know, each individual role. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I think we could do a little, maybe make things a little clearer of like, okay, I want to be a maintainer of this working group. What, what do I do? <laughs> so um, to that, I'll oh, go ahead, Matt. Well, I've seen two distinct things here not everybody wants to be a leader too so i think it's important to have path to contribution and path to leadership because both paths kind of like they go the same way but one forks off a little bit um people can be long-term contributors without becoming leadership in the project as well that, i just want to hammer that point in <laughs> and the other part is uh I, I i wanted to skip ahead a little bit to the um to the to the onboarding stuff this is how i created the initial onboarding document um and I realized that it's just as confusing as the last one. So I'm, I, I'm looking for help on how to, uh, how to structure this. But basically, it comes down to the three top level, like I want to talk to somebody first. I want to participate in a meeting, or I want to contribute code. And there's a lot more that can be added there. But I, it, it, I thought it was kind of aligned with what you're talking about with Drupal, Elizabeth. I mean, at this point, like listening to, to this conversation, like, I'm wondering, like, what is the harm in getting rid of that entire technical checklist of skills that you have to have? And simply just, if you want to be a maintainer, just let us know. Like, we're, 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 not, we're like, I, I would highly suspect somebody who's never been in a meeting or never, like, contributed anything is just going to, like, on their first day in a community call, be like, hey, I'd like to be a maintainer of of the DEI working group. Like, I just, I really don't suspect that would ever happen, right? And if it does, we we could say that's, thank you for your interest. Maybe, you know, here's a way, a few ways that we think that you could probably get there. Like, what if we just removed all barriers and just said, you know what, if you wanna be a maintainer, just tell Elizabeth, that's just tell her, that's what you wanna do, just let her know. You wanna be a contributor to Matt's point? Great, just, let us know. We will help you find a way to contribute, whether it's through events, whether it's through software, whether it's through documentation. We just removed everything. You don't even, I mean, for goodness sake, like in the chaos project, you don't even have to have Git or GitHub skills. You could, you could just do everything in Google Docs and then ask everybody, you know, ask the rest of the community members to get this into to GitHub. That's totally fine. And that would be huge. Um, I'm sorry I'm talking a lot, but I, I really love that idea of the lowest level being so egalitarian and then you move up on that low structure. Only concern I have is that when you have no structure for uh, like for barriers for entry or to the position like that, it's not that the people that are unqualified are going to make it, but most of the time it turns out that people who are the maintainers of the group organizers get to make the get to have the first and final say of who gets to be a maintainer who gets to move up in the project. And that can be a little dangerous. I just, I guess in all of the years of running the chaos project, I've, 
we've been pretty informal anyway up until this point. I'd say we never have looked at that list, not once, and it's worked okay. So I'm, I'm almost just thinking like we just we just type what we do. Like you just show up at the meetings and just be a participant. And if you have an interest, just tell us. Like a lot of the Google Summer of Code um, mentees, like at the end, they're always like, I'd love to stay involved in the chaos project. And that's it. That's the only thing they say. And I know they've had experience like doing things over the summer. Um, but that's on us then to find a way for them to connect. That's, and we do. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just, it's kind of like the DCO sign off, like anything that we can do to, to reduce people's desire to contribute is probably a, a good thing here. And I'm, I'm willing to personally take the, the risk of any danger that may come from, from assigning somebody maintainership role on a, on a repository. And we can always roll things back. That's not a big deal. Would it make sense to, so we have a page that has describes kind of the roles and responsibilities. Um, and it's, you know, it's pretty lightweight. Would it make sense to do something similar that the DEI badging um, initiative does where there's just a simple form that you can fill out to like kind of um, register your intent of you. Hey, I want to be a reviewer. So here's my stuff. Can you can you contact me and can you walk me through like what that would entail and get me up to speed? I like that. What are other people's thoughts on that? For anyone who doesn't know this is the form, it's fairly simple. Uh, it does not ask a lot, um, but it, it helps someone get started as a reviewer. And we could even make some of that optional, like the GitHub handle and stuff. You probably would actually need that right. to participate. I mean, if you want to be a maintainer, then probably, yeah, you have to have a GitHub account. But um, you know, to just be a part of the working group, if you want to just kind of have a little more of a deeper connection. Because I tell you what, as a community manager, it is really tough for me when I see a new person that comes to a few meetings um, and then maybe you know floats away. I don't have any way to contact them or to reach out if I don't, you know, if, if I, there's no like kind of not formal, but like I don't know how to reach them to see if they're okay and like do they want to come back and like, mm -hmm. you know, maybe just touch base or be like, hey, thanks for coming to the meeting, even just like something simple. It's really, that's that's a, a piece that I struggle with a lot because there's a lot of people that have come and gone that I like, I miss them. Like I want them to come back and say hi, or, you know, just like participate if they have time and I don't, I don't have any way to reach them. So this would kind of be nice to have that. I agree. This is a very interesting conversation, actually. I think there's a lot of like wide ranging thoughts here in terms of, in a really good way, you know? And then the same is like, I don't ever wanna like ask somebody to do something <laughs> if they're attending meetings and like, but maybe that's what I should do. Like I'm, you know, I don't wanna ever us like provide an action item for somebody when they're like, I, would, I just wanted to listen. <laughs> I didn't wanna do anything. I didn't want work. Yeah, totally. I totally see that too. And so like, and I'm, I'm much more of like, I'm not gonna, you know, hunt down the internet to find you kind of, <laughs> but you know, I hope that you stick around. So maybe this is, I don't know. Yeah. A way to keep that connection going. Kafaya. Well, I guess the form could also ask how involved they want to be. I like That's a that. great question so that we don't have to infer it by talking to the person too. That makes a lot of sense. So I have an ask for whoever runs a Slack channel. I'm not even, I think it's Elizabeth. I'm not even sure anymore. Um, I'd like to, as soon as possible, instead of saying talk to Elizabeth, because I know Elizabeth, you've got bandwidth. <laughs> and um, I'd, I'd, rather, I'd rather have something more formal that says like, go to the hashtag mentor, mentorship channel or hashtag, uh, hashtag 
new contributors channel or something like that in this chaos Slack channel. And then um, once they join the channel and join the new contributors channel, then that'll be a spot that's kind of um, safe for someone to be new to the project. I like that. So like as soon as we get that done, I can just start um, putting together a, a, a kind of um, better page for the new con new contributors, and then we can start linking to it from the. Ooh, I have um, a thought. Yeah, go ahead. Is there any way? I have no idea. But like, let's say that we had what you were talking about, Matt. Like, join the newcomer Slack channel, or you know, new contributor Slack channel, or whatever it might be. That when they join they're given the small survey in slack that would be like personal somehow you know like i join a channel and the first thing i get is like hi like a bot like hi welcome you know look tell us just a tiny bit about yourself this won't go public this will <laughs> this is just to help us understand how we can help you engage with the project something along those lines i, I don't even know if that's possible it, it is possible it is it that's cool. It is like I'm uh, um, uh, um, a Slack channel that um, does exactly that too. And then there is this thing, the community, just general people in the community, not like it's necessary the community manager. Someone in the community can just come up and be like, immediately they see a new member join. We just come over with like, hi, welcome to uh, layer five. Then we just like put the old handbook of layer five, like this is the best way to start. Then you can go through um, the project, you can contribute to and uh, speak to a mentor and all like that. I, I really like that. So um, maybe I could start investigating how to do that. Like maybe I could make a private channel and we could start, because I have no idea how to do it. I'm glad that yeah. it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a, a, a channel can be uh, uh, called uh, newcomers, something like that. Maybe newcomers channel. Yeah, yeah. No, I'll make a newcomers, like uh, some channel that's private, and then I can maybe play around with like the bots on there to, like, as people join, you would automatically get a few things, you know, like what to do next. I don't know if anybody would like to help me in that regard. Yes. Okay, cool. I can, I can be a test subject. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm also willing to be a guinea pig in this case. Really All right. to well, I, I enjoy being a test case, so please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, All right, well, that's awesome. This is the whole group. So everybody here. <laughs> So what I'll do is I'll make a, a channel and then I'll invite, it'll just be a private channel for the time being. Um, and uh, I'll have to figure out, uh, let me let me think about it, just like logistically how to do it. So next time I'll talk about this. Thank you, everybody. Well, uh, I, I wanted to um, leave a little bit of time at the end of the, we're, we're, we got like the five minute warning right now. Actually, we have four minutes. Time is ticking. So um, let's um, go ahead and have any uh, kind of an open agenda for um, anything else you'd like to talk about. If anybody's going to be at all things open. Um, you know, I, I think maybe the one thing that I would just like to always kind of bring up in this group is we over the last uh, like nine months or so, we ran a kind of a DEI audit on the chaos project itself, ways that we can improve our practices and better center DEI within our own project. We um, have a couple folks in the community who are gonna help implement some of these changes. So the audit itself kind of proposed ways that we could make improvements, but the audit didn't necessarily make those improvements itself. Does that make sense? Like the team, the team didn't actually, the team that was doing the audit didn't actually make the changes. So we needed to take what was recommended and now we have to implement some, some of the changes. And we do have now a team, uh, at least the start of a team that's gonna look at, at implementing these changes. It's the chaos operations team. And so I'm pretty excited about that. And then it does look like 
from the from our learnings about our own internal reflection on how to improve or center better center DEI within the chaos project, we're going to be able to take some of that work to a new project that's not chaos. It's called All In. And then the All In project is a project that is also at the Linux Foundation, um, but it's about All In for maintainers and All In for students. And we would help with the All In for maintainers component. So this would essentially be, say, maintainers of open source projects who would themselves like to better center DEI within their own projects and based on <laughs> What is going on there with the Ghostbusters logo? <laughs> so um, helping projects who themselves would like to better center DEI, we can kind of help in that 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 role just based on what we have learned ourselves. So I just like to bring that up. And this is continues to move forward, and I'm pretty happy about it. Sorry to distract you, Matt. I was just making a nice logo for the chaos operations team. Why that? Why did you pick that? Uh, I, I don't know. It, Ghostbusters has a good logo and we can steal it. <laughs> that is probably as good a reason as any. <laughs> they also announced a new movie recently. So that's going to be, I don't know. I was excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, sorry, I tried to distract. I'm really excited about the chaos operation team. It seems like it's going to be nice um, improvements for the project. I, I'd like to see the document that the uh, that where the suggested changes live right now. Do you have that public? I I don't have it handy right now, but yes, I will get it and I can bring it up next week. Okay, sounds good. Well, I think that's the um, the end of the meeting. Then we got one minute to spare. We got a lot of good discussion today. As always, thanks everybody. Yeah, we'll see you all next week. Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.